Mario. Number six is where it's at, Uppy Jumper style. In this episode, I speak with Shani and Tim from The Painted Fish. The Painted Fish is a B&B near the Fremantle beaches, built and designed to encourage and educate people about sustainable living and design. Shani and Tim speak a bit about how The Painted Fish has evolved and other positives that have sprouted within their street. Here's Tim. So basically what we do is we run a business, which is called The Painted Fish, and it's just like a bed and breakfast. That also supports us, like it's our main financial income, mm. so we have a lot of time to do stuff in the street. So we run a lot of street events and a lot of community events. And then we also run Living Smart courses. So those are the three main things, really. But from a design perspective, probably, I mean, why... Payfish is sort of popular for two reasons. It's a nice, quiet place to stay. It's yeah. you know, all beautifully artistically done, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And Tim had run it before with a real art focus. So it was, you know, this art and soul kind of crafty place. Yeah. Not crafty, but... And then when Did it sort of like a retreat. Yeah, yeah, when we reopened it, we decided we'd do as much sustainable stuff as we possibly could, and it was kind of nice because it was stuff that you'd like to kind of do in your home, but you can always justify that the time it was a lot of the cost and energy to go into it. So yeah. Tim basically did a lot of research. It works quite well because it's got an old cottage on it, which is 111 years old, which is difficult to retrofit. It's not heritage listed, but it's pretty old, so we didn't want to actually change the structure of the house and start mucking around with it. So that's got some interesting design things in it that Tim's kind of invented or, you know, played around with somebody, somebody else or picked yeah. <laughs> somewhere else and applied in a different way. Yeah. And then there's a studio down the back, which a lot of people are interested in because a lot of people with the double block might want to put in you know, some sort of... So it's a wrought iron and a steel studio. Oh, OK, right. Oh, that you um, built yourself. That, yeah, Tim's built, yeah, Tim's built it. And then there's a little yeah. railway carriage. So it's kind of another example of high density living without going two stories up mm. with just small spaces. But we've done it like high density that still allows for uh, connection with nature, right, lots of garden and all that kind of stuff. And the fact that we've got a property which is run as commercial in a residential area is in itself quite a sustainable thing. There's a big move back towards mixed use. So that basically because it's there and we're here, we, can, we don't have to go anywhere to work. You just walk up the street. You just walk up the street. <laughs> and also because, as I said, because we actually live in the street that we're working, then it makes us actually be part of the community that we live in. The business has been running for about three years now. Yeah. And from the beginning we had this kind of vision where it would be a kind of educational resource, I suppose, hmm. and a place of sort of inspiration, plus an income-producing thing for us, so we could then you know, do the educational stuff, which is where the Living Smart course came in. Hmm. But it's just grown faster than we thought. Like, we thought it would take two or three years to establish the business. And then we'd stop doing the education stuff. But in the last you know, couple of months, we've done, I think I figured out the other day, eight, either guest presentations at someone else's Living Smart course or open home or whatever, because it's just like heaps and heaps of people are interested in it. Yeah. It's just growing people. Mm. Uh, we got a little bit involved with a book called Transition Towns. I don't know if you've read it, Transition Town Handbook. I've heard about the concept. Yeah. Well, we're actually not involved in that group anymore. That group decided we'd do some sort of awareness raising stuff. We had four or five movies in the street oh, where yeah. we just got a van yeah. and a sheet on the side of the van. We've yeah. got a data projector and we just projected it up. Oh, cool. And everyone sat in the street, <laughs> had a little picnic, shared dinner and then just yeah. watched the movie. So we watched, you know, Australia's Pumping Empty and Power of Community and a few real sort of iconic so it's environmental you, movies. You can say by that we're pretty much almost like anti-equipment, you know, yeah. the the screens. What do you got? Oh, we've got a sheep and truck parked up the street. Yeah. So our, our stuff is all pretty low-key and community-based and yeah. using what's around and trying to encourage other people to become involved. So, yeah, it's interesting from a design point of view. We're kind of like mm, almost anti. <laughs> yeah. Not entirely, you know, like we're just getting new photovoltaics. Oh, man, I was going to say, when it comes to like photovoltaics and water tanks and stuff, yeah. you're, you're into the design of that. And like, bikes. Yeah, I guess the thing is, the <laughs> primary thing, really, when you're looking at sustainability is reducing your consumption of everything to begin with. Yeah. And then looking at, okay, with the stuff that you do need to consume and how can you design it efficiently and well. Yeah. We got a bit triggered recently. There was an article, lo- article on the local paper from a photovoltaic company saying you can have whatever you've got now, but you just put photovoltaics on your own. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a bit of a tendency for our culture. We tend to believe that science will rescue us. You know? Also, like, that there's something about our way of living which is sacrosanct in our right, which there isn't. And even if there was, I mean, when you look at it, it's not a particularly good example. I think the other thing that people get from it is, like, they often just will find one little thing that they can do at home. Mm. 
Like, there's lots of tiny little touches at the painted fish that are subtle, but, you know, like, there's no tissue boxes down there. I've got little baskets that I've made, and you put handkerchiefs in them. Ah. So they go to look for a tissue box, and they go, yeah. oh, right, oh, okay, handkerchiefs, okay, what's, you know, the rationale yeah. behind that? Instead of just, if you go to a hotel room, you can't recycle in a hotel. Mm. So we've got the actual three bins, and we explain how it works in our yeah. area, and I just think that actually encourages people wanting to do it properly. Yeah. So, so. while people are on holiday, they often have time to think about that yeah. sort of stuff when they're on holiday yeah. as well sometimes. And you get a bit of a chance to see it sort of in action. What's an example? Say for food, like we grow quite a bit of food on site, mm. and with the food we grow it from like largely water that we collect and compost that we make from the refuse that we collect on site. Yeah. And so say, you know, you think you might think you're going to go to the shops and buy something to eat, but if you go to the shops, there's a bike there, which was recycled for the off the side of the road, and it's free for you to use. Yeah. And then there's bag that you can take so you don't need to use a plastic bag. Oh, okay, right. And there's veggies and there's in the garden. And growing in the garden if you want to have a look. Yeah. And for some people that's kind of weird, but some of them get really excited about it. Yeah. Weird, like whole the mobby uppies that came from Sydney. And they were, like never thought about it, but they got up to have brekkie and went, wow, and there's like heaps of tomatoes growing everywhere and the basil and the spinach, so they made this kind of eggs and yeah. stuff that Fresh they could yeah. you know. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what I really like when I go home because Dad has a garden going. Yeah. And probably people, they're used to staying at a hotel or whatever and anything extra, it's all itemised and you get paid for Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, the bar fridge is free. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why people have trouble with it sometimes. charlie has got this saying, what do you reckon? Eat it up, wear it out, make it do or do it out. So I feel like <laughs> when people leave, they often leave food, so we end up eating all their food they leave behind and the stuff that we get yeah. out of the garden. But a ridiculous also. collection of half packets of pasta and stuff that people leave up there. One yeah. of the things Shani's done recently, which I really like, she put together a, a skills register. Well, you must have talked about it. It's something I'd done at school. I used to be a school principal. Yeah. And one of the parents had this idea where you actually register your skills. Yeah. So the original idea was that instead of paying your voluntary contribution, you yeah. donate time. Okay, so if right. you're an architect, you yeah. do some design around the school for five hours. It never really eventuated like that. So we thought, well, let's do the same thing because Tim and I started, you know, like we've got a mulcher down there mm. and we just said, look, if anyone wants to borrow it. So we sort of started with that and then we thought, you know, how many wheelbarrows do you need when you're going to use a wheelbarrow once a month? Yeah. So we just got names, phone numbers, skills and interests, resources that they had and mm. resources that they needed. So, for example, we discovered things like who's got all the lemon trees, which yeah. is really handy. <laughs> so my favourite story of the skills register is that we were sitting here having a meeting and everyone had given us their email addresses. So I had like 150 email addresses that I had to type in the computer. Yeah. And I was just going, oh, this is like a really you know, annoying task. Yeah. And a woman down the road brings her sheet back and she stands at the door and she goes, oh, I just want to let you know that I've got good secretarial skills and I'm not working at the moment, so if you need anything. And we're all just going, <laughs> fantastic. And we're able to like immediately give her the list yeah. of things. And then she said, I noticed that you guys want food because we, we're, neither of us are cooks. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, so I, when I made my vegetarian lasagna, I've made two. So yeah. I'll bring it around in half an hour. Oh. Right? And, so everyone, and all these guests in our house are just going, Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I, sort of, I looked at her sheet, and the, the only thing she wanted was someone to take care of her cats, which yeah. are like 20-year-old precious cats to her. Yeah. And the 12-year-old boy next door is like a cat whisperer. He just yeah. loves cats. So I was able to say, well, Obi's the one to take care of your cats. Yeah. So they're just linking people yeah, in that cool. way. And it also helped, you know, in the old days. <laughs> had a quick look at how you was then, didn't you? Right? Hey? You sounded like an old brat. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's in the rocking chair, that doesn't. You know, like in a village... You'd have a significant relationship to someone because they would make you bread or shoot your horses or birth your kids. Yeah. You know what often happens in the suburbs? The people around you are arbitrary. So the more that you start to share your resource with them, the more that they actually become a significant part of your community rather yeah. than just someone that you never see and you don't know. You've got some sort of link to them. some real connection and some sort of or something about what they do that actually improves your life. Yeah. And, you know. And it's funny how proud that has made people of the street. Yeah. Like, mm. we've sort of got a little reputation now as a sustainable street. Yeah. My interest is in, like, retrofitting what's already there. Yeah. And I think that the easiest and quickest way to do that is to actually get the people in the street talking and sharing resources. Yeah. So I kind of go, yeah, bring on depression, where each household might have someone that's not working. Mm. And where our time becomes less precious and therefore doing things that take time, like recycling or growing food or preparing food or bottling, or bottling it, it. Or riding the bike because it takes you an extra five minutes to go yeah. become more viable. 
That was Shani and Tim from The Painted Fish. More info can be found on their website. Till next time, have fun and catch you about the place.